The Jesus myth and Jesus historicity theories both make predictions about what we might expect to find in the secular historical record before 50 AD. Mythicism predicts that we might find a record of a religious group believing in a mythical Jesus, whereas historicity predicts that we may find evidence of a real person called Jesus. Jesus was a common name and mythical beliefs abounded in this period. Cast a wide enough net and there are such references, but none of them can clearly be linked to Jesus of the Gospels. Many mythical motifs are attested to before this date and have recognisable parallels in a triumphalist Jesus, but that doesn't help us determine whether the end result was a man who was mythicised, drawing on such sources, or a myth that was historicised. Both theories must be adapted in the light of this historical silence. A historical Jesus must have been sufficiently obscure during his lifetime not to attract enough attention from historians that references have survived through the period of historical hegemony, a period during which they would have been sought out and preserved. I suppose it is possible that references may have been specifically removed because they contradicted the triumphalist Jesus of the Church, but that is speculation. The position then becomes one of an obscure historical Jesus, possibly with a small group of adherents during his lifetime, and that after his death, the group waxed in thraldom and statute, becoming more numerous, organised and vocal to the point where they began to attract the attention of historians. At this point, whatever it was that attracted historians' interest would have come either directly or indirectly via Christians. They would naturally have sought independent corroboration, but how easy would this have been? Any secular records of Jesus' actions, trial or execution would presumably have been held in Jerusalem and they may well have been destroyed, lost, moved or misfiled in the course of the 66 to 70 AD Judeo-Roman War and sacking. Historicity therefore predicts that in the absence of any evidence predating 70 AD, later secular records would refer to Jesus in the context of discussing Christians and their beliefs with the possibility of corroboration from independent sources, but by no means a certainty of this. If a historical Jesus was not sufficiently prominent to attract the attention of contemporary historians, then there would at least have been civil records of his trial and execution. However, such records may not have been easy to find. It would have been one amongst probably thousands of records. We don't know what indexing system may have been used, but anyone searching would have had limited information. They don't seem to have had a specific date. Jesus was a common name, and of course Jerusalem had been destroyed in 70 AD, along with much of its recorded civic history, no doubt. If such records were available and used by later historians, we may be able to tell either because historians inform us of their source, or because specific details beloved of bureaucrats and historians, but poorly remembered in oral tradition, would have been recorded. Most prominent among these is dates. Furthermore, the process of apotheosis is likely to have been accompanied by controversy, if not schism. The Arian controversy comes to mind, but was perhaps a little too late to support historicity. Historicity does, however, predict the appearance of statements in Christian literature of the 1st and 2nd centuries denouncing those who believed Jesus was just a man. Mythicism holds that up to the 50s AD, Christians believed in a mythical Christ. Over the following years, a historical biography was fabricated for him. Euhemerization appeared in the Gospel of Mark, which was written sometime after the year 70. Historicism gained traction so that it was at least a significant faction by the end of the first century. Historicity reached dominance by the third century and hegemony by the fourth. This means that by about the second century, both the historicist and mythicist theories have Christians believing the same things, and therefore any historical reference which comes either directly or indirectly from Christian sources will be the same. This means we will need to be able to assess whether particular statements in the historical record originate from Christian sources. Some historians such as Pliny the Younger tell us that Christians were their source. Most, however, do not. Specific things to look for in passages which discuss Jesus are whether Christians are mentioned, whether things are mentioned that only Christians would believe, whether Christian sources are acknowledged, and whether secular sources are acknowledged. Under minimal historicity, it seems likely that Christian sources and Christian literature were more widely available than secular sources, and furthermore we can be confident that when the interest of secular historians was aroused in this period, it was because of Christians, not because of Jesus per se. This means that whether a historian is critical or supportive of Christianity, 
we cannot safely assume that they are using secular sources unless we find the telltale signs such as acknowledging those sources or citing specific dates. Under mythicism, there were no secular records of Jesus' existence. This gives the theory the problem of not being able to prove a negative. This problem goes as far as Paul because even if it is accepted that Paul had no knowledge of a historical Jesus, we cannot exclude the possibility that Christianity formed by the convergence of different religions, one of which did have a historical Jesus unknown to Paul. Recalling that I have not required that for Jesus to have existed, he was called Jesus in his lifetime. As you found this obscure video, I'm sure you've seen many of the others out there and have a pretty good idea who the secular historians are and what they say. And you'll also be familiar with two particularly tiresome arguments, one from each side. The tiresome historicist argument is to cite sources from the end of the first century and from the second and third centuries without applying these tests and then simply assert that they support historicity when in fact both theories predict them equally well. The tiresome mythicist argument is to assert that the silence of history prior to the end of the first century is strong evidence for the non-existence of Jesus because many of the things he did would surely have attracted historical attention. These are things like the events surrounding his death, such as the sun being darkened for three hours, earthquakes, dead saints arising, and the temple veil being rent in two. Actually, neither minimal historicity nor mythicism hold that any of these events happened. They are purely part of a triumphal historicity, and this is a straw man argument asserting that historicists claim something that they do not. I'll review some of the historians who talk about Jesus in coming videos and we'll be asking these questions of them. Questions you might also consider asking if historians you see presented elsewhere. Does the historian mention Christians? Do they mention things that only Christians would believe? Do they mention Christian sources? Do they mention specific secular sources? Do they mention specific dates?